Here we go. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of Showtime TV. I'm your host. I have a very special guest this evening. Everybody knows her. Oh man, let me see. She's a playwright. She's a producer. She's a director. She's an actress. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome um, Ms. Connie Drummond. Ms. Connie, good evening and welcome to today's program. Well, good evening, Omar. And thank you so much for having me on tonight. Uh, it's, it's been a um, Okay, I got some uh, feedback. I'm gonna um, let me finish down a little bit. Okay, we was getting a little echo there, so I have to be straight. Okay, all right, Miss Connie. Okay, so now, um, you, like I said, I introduced you as a producer, director, actress, and all that good stuff. Uh, so tell me, how, how did you get the acting bug? What, what brought you into the entertainment the uh, entertainment field? Oh, my goodness. I was in a play when I was eight years old. Um, I wanted to be Marian Anderson, but I didn't get that part. Mm -hmm. So the part that I got actually was a non-speaking role. It was called Woman at Door. So <laughs> when Marian Anderson knocked on the door because she was uh during the play she was trying to collect money to take her music lessons and she knocked on my door and she asked if she could wash my steps and the only thing i had to do was shake my head no but i shook my head no like so well that my mother started screaming and hollering in the audience and everything like that and it made me feel really really good so that's kind of how it all started <laughs> Okay, so now, now the, the playwriting, you've done, you know, numerous plays, um, Philadelphia yeah. and in Wilmington and other places in Delaware Valley. Um, at what point did you decide that you wanted to be a, a playwright? Well, um, I've been writing since I was a child, but it wasn't until I got involved with a Creative Touch um, production company that I decided to um, start writing plays. I always thought that when I wrote, it would be, I would be a book author. Mm -hmm. But um, when I got involved with Creative Touch, it just showed me another avenue where I could use my writing. And, um, you know, I just, I just love doing it. I love being on the set. And, you know, I love being like on the board of directors and backstage. So that was the one, you know, a, I guess a turn in my writing career that pushed me into this direction. Okay, now why don't you mention to those who are watching, what are some of the uh, plays that you've written? Okay, well, of course I have my um, original, my award-winning play, North Philly Billies. Um, that's the one that we actually went to like three states to uh, produce. Okay. Um, I've done another one called Rumors. And, um, you know, since I got into the space, I've actually produced um, and directed other people's plays as well. Um, that gives you an opportunity to, you know, learn a little bit more, you know, because when you write your own plays, you only have that one mindset. But mm -hmm. as you start to read and, you know, produce other people's work, it kind of expands your horizons a little bit. <laughs> right, right. So, we've so done, now, um, right. The, we've done the uh, 12 Angry Women, the Vagina Monologues, we've done the meeting. And then uh, right before, I guess about 2018, we did a play called Call Me Mr. Scrooge, which was a Christmas play um, by okay. another playwright. And that was really cool because we did the play and we didn't know that there was a reporter in the, um, from the Philadelphia Tribune there. Oh, so he wow. gave us a really great write up and everything. And I was so proud of the cast and everything because they worked really, really hard. Okay, no, no, where, where was this play performed? It was um, performed at Artscape, um, my oh, okay. Black Box Theater in, in Wilmington. All right, all right. Now, Arscape, you just mentioned Arscape. Uh, you had this now for, I'm not sure how long, but but you can tell me that the process of how, how did you go about getting to Arscape? But let's start from the beginning. Um, you, you probably, okay. you, were, you were brainstorming saying, you know what, I want my own place to so take it from there. Well, um, it, it's, it's, it's a really interesting story. Um, that particular year, well, we just had our fifth anniversary at Artscape. Um, we oh, okay. celebrated that in May, but, um, what happened was that particular year, I wanted to mount a production mm -hmm. and I couldn't find rehearsal space. I couldn't find a theater, like everything was rented out. Cause you know, as you know, Delaware, we have a lot of artists here. 
Right. Um, so I couldn't find a space and I ended up having to sit a whole year out without a production. So, you know, when that's your work, you, you know, you have to, you have to work. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I was, my focus was off and everything like that. And I was like, you know what, I need to find a space um, just, you know, for rehearsals and things like that. And then I'll never have to worry about this again. So, you know, right. I brainstormed with a few of my uh, friends who had opened small theaters across the country. And, um, you know, they kind of gave me some tips and everything like that. Well, what happened was the job where I was working at uh, started laying off people. Oh, yeah. And uh, they laid me off and gave me my severance check. And while I was walking down the street, I saw the building next door to Artscape. Mm -hmm. so I looked in it and it looked like it could probably be a rehearsal space so I was like okay maybe I'll just start here and then I went into the rental office and um, the lady said I told the lady what I wanted to do I sat down with her and I talked to her for about an hour and a half and she says actually I think I have a better space for you and she took me into Artscape which used to be Film Brothers oh Lord and, yeah um, it used to be Film Brothers and she took me in there and it was just the perfect space because I just was looking for something where I could do plays and maybe have about 75 or 80 people, you know, in there just to do small productions, you know, black box style, old fashioned, you know, um, minimal sets, that kind of thing. And um, I fell in love with the place and uh, signed the lease about a week later and the rest is history. I'm now working at Artscape full time. Oh, and, okay. uh, it's just been a blessing all the way around, you know. So, so tell me something. When you got that key after after all the documentation was signed, and you had that key and you was walking in that door, you opened that door. What was the feeling like? Oh my God! It was, <laughs> I mean, it was. It felt like such an accomplishment, but it, it took me back to when I bought my first home. Oh. And yeah. um, it, it's just an amazing feeling when you know that you're in your space and, and you, you no longer have to beg for rehearsal space. You don't have to talk people into letting you produce, um, you know, a play at their theater. You know, it was just an, it was an amazing feeling um, knowing that I was my own person mm -hmm. and I, I had complete control over my production, um, my production needs. Yeah, I remember when you first moved in, um... You were telling me that that you painted the the, the place yourself. Uh, you hooked up very very yes, nice. I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Eleven gallons of orange paint. <laughs> right, right. But but that's that's desire and that's that's motivation that that's due for self. Oh my God! Yes, it is. And I'm telling you how tired I was afterward. But it was all worth it. You know, it's like when you when you get something. Like, I didn't want to trust anybody else right. um, to do it. Okay. You know, you know that, and the fact that I had ran out of money by the time I put all of the deposits and stuff down and bought all the equipment and chairs and things like that that I needed. So uh, there was like really no money left to do the painting. So I said, well, I'll buy the paint and I'll just do it myself. And it took me about three weeks. Okay. Um, I did it every day after I left my day job. Right. And I was in there till about 11 o'clock every day. And when it was finally done, um, it was just, it was just an awesome feeling. Um, it, it just really was. It's almost indescribable how how good that feels to have that accomplishment. Because um, as you know, I started Lady C Productions in 2009, right, and okay. we got into Artscape in 2016. So it was a very long time coming. Um, right. Ten years. And yeah. The thing was, I I never. I never thought about actually owning my own space until I couldn't get it. So, you know, until I couldn't find places to perform. So, you know, they say uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. And it was a necessity that I'd be producing. And that's what came from it. Uh, you know, you said something just a while ago just that was very significant. Uh, you said that you are now working there full time. This is your passion. This is your creativity. Yes. So, so talk about the transition from being there on a part-time basis to now being there on a full-time basis. Well, um, well, the transition, it was, um, well, again, because we've had COVID, the company oh, I was yeah. working for, they had to cut out a bunch of positions. And after being with them for about almost five years, I was one of the positions that was cut out. 
And I remember them having me on a Zoom call and them telling me that my um, position had been uh, terminated. And all I could think about was, if you guys just get off the phone, I have a 4.30 at Artscape. So um, I basically, I went that night to Artscape for my 4.30 appointment. And then I, you know, got my office out, my office hours and whatever. They're from 11 to 4. But of course, with other things, you know, I'm there late a lot of times. So the transition really wasn't that difficult for me because I had already worked a full-time job up until the day when I started working there full-time. Right. So, right. Um, right. You, you know, it wasn't that big a transition. Actually, I, I, I do find that I feel like I work harder at Artscape than I did when I was working at Artscape in oh, the full-time okay. job right. because I can well, you, put more right. time into it. Well, you know, our, our escape is, is a full-time job in itself. You know, um, you, know, you had to run the facility and, and you also have, which we'll get into a little later, um, you have a marketplace, uh, which uh, I've seen on the weekends, I've seen on Facebook where you have people from different businesses and entrepreneurs coming in and, and, and vending, um, which, which is a very good thing. Um, now, are, are you running our escape by yourself or do you, do you have a staff? Do you, do you have volunteers? No, I actually run Artscape by myself. And um, what I do is when I have a day, like some, some, some weeks I might have three or four events back to back, um, then I have people that I hire to come in and, you know, do the cleaning and, you know, do the switch, you know, switch between events because with Artscape, everybody has a different floor plan that they want their okay. event to look like when they rent the space out. So sometimes I may have to, you know, do a quick change. Like I might have a brunch in the morning and a party at night. So it gives me like three or four hours to do a, a quick change, you know, change the furniture, the linens, all of that kind of stuff. So when it gets too much for me, I do um, have people that I can call to, you know, come and help me out. Okay. That, um, that is awesome. Right now I have um, an intern that um, helps me with some things, but not necessarily at Artscape. It's, you know, out, outside things, uh, reaching out to people, that kind of thing. Okay. Now you mentioned uh, a couple of times, uh, Black Box Theater. Well, what is Black Box Theater? For those who may not know. Okay. Well, Black Box Theater is like, you see the Grand Opera House and all of those big giant theaters. Well, long, wow. long, long time ago, uh, when people first started doing theater, it was it's just just what it says. It's a square or rectangular building for theater um, that's generally painted black. But since my favorite color is orange, I decided to do something a little bit different. I painted mine orange instead of black. Okay. Um, but a lot of them um, are held in, um, you know, like warehouse space. Okay. Yeah, so Black Box Theater is just a simplified way of, it's just a simplified theater. Um, our lights and sound and everything is portable. So, you know, when you don't own the building, you don't want to have to leave your stuff in there. So, you know, our lights and sounds and everything are portable. If I need a uh, big lighting and big sound, then I'll hire somebody to come in for the production. Right, right, that definitely. You know, um, a lot of people, when they think about theater, they, they think about uh, Hollywood, they think about... Uh, the big names. Um, there's a certain look that 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 uh, casting directors look for uh, when when mm -hmm. they cast their plays. So so in, in terms of, of your casting, um, or, or do do you look for the Hollywood type looking people, or do you look for uh, community type people? Um, how, how how do you cast your 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 um, your actors and actresses, or how, how do you go about casting? Well, I should ask. <laughs> um, I actually don't have a I, I'm going to say I rarely have a certain look that I'm looking for. Okay. Um, I like when I do a play, I like for my actors to look like the audience. Okay. You know, there are some people that won't hire a lead unless she's a size three and five, nine and maybe six feet in heels. Right. But for me, um, I mean, I'm a leading lady and I'm a plus size girl. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, um, that does help a lot in my, in my, when I make choices. Um, I try to make the people look like someone that the audience can actually relate to. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, because casting, you know, it's 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 not easy. So, so some of us, you know, we, we like typecasting. <laughs> and yeah, <it's> kind of <laughs> exactly, because you can get you can get typecasted. And um, one thing I was always casted as somebody's aunt, somebody's best friend, somebody's mm. grandmother, um, because of my size, not just because you know, not it had nothing to do with my age. You know, I was getting okay. casted in grandpa grandma parts when I was thirty. Wow. You know, so I mean, it's like people see you and they see, you know, they see one thing. Right. And right. that's dangerous. That's dangerous because it shows where you have a one track mind. Like you can't see um, like most directors wouldn't see me as um, a sex symbol. Okay. You know. Yeah. You know, um, I was in- yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it's, it's like it's like I, I, I'll give you two examples: uh, Holly Berry and Denzel Washington. Uh, when Holly Berry played in um, Spike Lee's movie, um, I forgot she, she she played a drug a drug addict and um, oh, the, the crack the crack uh, lady, the crack yeah, head, yeah, crackhead. And people look at Holly Berry and say, "What a, a crackhead?" You know, because you know she's beautiful, so so she she be looked upon as a leading uh, a leading actress that the male loved, he falls in love with. You know, got people like mm-hmm. Denzel Washington in, in Training Day, he was a bad guy, and it was kind of odd for people to see Denzel Washington because they used to see him being a ladies' man or, or being a good guy. So, but that's that's part of acting. You know, part of acting is is is, is portraying a character that that's not you. <laughs> right. You have to bring the character. You have to bring the character alive. That, and. Right. Um, uh, uh, it's funny because I, I've met some actors that just, they've been typecasted so much they don't know how to play anything else. Right, right. So that's going to be detrimental to their careers. Definitely, definitely. So so, so going back to, to, to your plays, um, you, are your plays, uh, do, you, do you write dramatic plays? Do you write comedies? Do you write suspense, action? What type of plays do you write? Oh my goodness. Um, so far, the plays that I've actually produced have been maybe family inspirational comedies. But I'm going to tell you, um, these last two years have been very, very trying for me, both professionally and emotionally. So mm-hmm. I have written some stuff. I mean, I've gone, I've, I've gone way, way out. Um, Oh, I've nice. done some, actually, I have one um, that I'm working on right now. And it's called Writer's Retreat, which is a murder mystery suspense. And um, that one is that one is crazy. So if people have seen my earlier plays, you know, like North Philly Billies and Rumors, right. they're going to see a whole different Connie um, with this one. Um, I've also written a play um, called um, Love's Last Holiday. It's actually my first um, tragic love story. And it's based on something that I experienced two, uh, about two years ago. Um, the person that I was involved with and very much in love with passed away very, you know, very suddenly. Um, and so, you know, they say that you can write your best stuff from a face, uh, place of pain. And um, that inspired me to, um, you know, write this particular, uh, this particular play. All right. You know, so then I, I have others. I've been really going out on the limb and testing my, um, you know, testing my limits. Right. You know, because when you, when you set the bar high, eventually you kind of reach that bar and you need to go somewhere else. So, um, you know, I have those things that I'm writing and I also have um, an erotic thriller. Oh, okay, so, so, so gotcha. that's going to be, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. different. I'm just going to say that's very different. And I will probably end up renting a theater to do that one. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because um, Artscape is not going to, to give me the space that I need um, in the atmosphere to perform that one. Right. So, you so, know, I do have yeah. a lot that I can do at Artscape, but there are some where I'm going to need um I mean, either going to need to rent a theater space or get another space. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah get another space, get a larger space, um, and it, maybe an additional space um, that will seat more people that I could do more things with. So, you know, actually, that's actually a goal. Okay. Now, Arscape, uh, what's the uh, full capacity that, that you have? Is it like 100 people, 90 people? 
Well, well I guess actually, kind of... Yeah, I actually have three capacities because I do so much with it. It's so if so I'm really doing an art gallery show, if I'm doing a show where it's just, you know, like an art gallery show, it's uh, 87. If I'm doing a seated um, show, which is what my, um, my dinner theaters are, when I do the dinner theater, it's 159. Okay. And then if I do like a live band and a lot of my bands come through, they don't want seating. They just, they like to stand. So a standing okay. event is actually $2.99. Okay, great. Great, great. Okay, now next month, or this summer, you got something big coming up. Now, I, I don't know if you had this in the past. I, I can't recall you having this in the past. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're having a youth summer workshop. Talk about it. Yes, the youth summer workshop. I'm really, really excited about this. It's, um, uh, my summer acting workshop. And um, I've actually uh, started it. Well, I'm going to tell you, I studied it a little bit because there's other places that have the workshops. So they do the, you know, workshop and they teach the acting techniques and those kind of things. And they run it for two weeks and the children learn all of those different, you know, techniques and stuff, how to do monologues and all that kind of stuff. My summer camp is going to be nine hours a week for six weeks. Mm. And the first two weeks is going to be all of the instruction, all those exercises, the monologues. I'm teaching them how to perform and write the monologues. And then we're going into a full out production. So I want the kids to have the experience of actually being on stage at the end of their acting class. So um, that's going to be great. I had some signups the other day um, on May 27th was our um, information meeting. So I had three kids come in and three kids sign up. So the registration is still open at Artscape. You know, if you guys want to, if someone wants to call and just get the information, um, they could text their email address and their name to 302-433-6622. And I will shoot them the registration forms. Or if they just want to call me at that number and come down, I'm at Artscape every day, except for Monday, and we can meet and I could discuss the class with them and, you know, see whether we're, you know, our, whether Lady C Productions is a good fit with their child. Wow. So it's a six, six, as you say, six weeks uh, to train, to training workshop. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, so, so now, right excuse me. Okay. Now, now what, are, what are the ages for, for the youth? Well, I started off with ages 10 to 15, but okay. a mother brought her eight-year-old in and this kid kind of blew me away. So if your eight-year-old or your nine-year-old is very mature and they can read a script and follow direction, then I will actually take the children younger because I've worked with children six years old and up. Okay. Now, now did it, you've had to audition first or can they just come in, just register and they automatically in the program? They just register and they're automatically in a program. Um, it's a teaching program. So if they have no acting experience whatsoever, they will have acting experience by the time they leave me. Okay. Now, would you like to discuss the calls or the, the calls to the workshop where you want them to get that later? No, it's $150. That's all I'm charging. Okay. So their kids will be with me for nine weeks, for, I mean, for nine hours a week, for six weeks, for 150. Okay, now what are the hours of the uh, workshops? Okay, so the workshops are going to be in the afternoon from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. Okay. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 3 to 6. Um, yeah, 3 to 6, and, um, you know, that's, that's when it's going to be. I need kids to be there on time because one of the most important things about production mm -hmm. is being on time. You know, time is money. When you are in a production and you're in a union house, if you're 30 minutes late, everybody that's working gets paid overtime. That comes out of the producer's pocket. So oh, I need people to be on time. Definitely, definitely. I mean, yeah. The time is money. Like yeah, the producer's not going to be too happy. They're going to pay some overtime. They're not going to be too happy <laughs> when they got to pay overtime for 40 people because, you know, the theater's open and, and you're not there. So that's one of the things that I, you know, try to teach from the beginning, even when I work with adults, um, mm -hmm. I've had adults that will, you know, take a part and say, oh, well, I can't be there at seven. I need to be there at 730. Well, you know, you can't be in this production then because I can't allow you to come and go as you please, where I'm keeping everybody else to a strict set schedule. 
you know, either you want to be here or you're not, and you have to just make sacrifices. Right, right. You know, and going back to, to your casting, um, do you have actors or actresses that have been more, that have been involved in more, more than one play that, that you really enjoy uh, having this actor? I mean, they're so talented, they're, they're so committed. You know, I gotta, I gotta continue to bring this person back because, you know, Spike Lee does it a lot. Sometimes you see the same actors or actresses in, 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 in this movie production. Yes. And then some of the other, uh, other um, directors and producers bring the same people at their productions. I have um, not so much because they're that good that I just want to have them back, okay. but because we work so well together, when I put the audition call out, they always audition. Okay, got you. So I've had a few, um, like Demetrius Bullock, um, he's been in two of my plays so far. He played uh, Martin Luther King when we did the meeting. Um, and then he played uh, Ebenezer Scrooge in the Christmas play we did a couple years ago. Um, Ashley Baker has been in maybe all but two of my plays. And, um, you know, uh, who else? Rob C., as a matter of fact, he's been in uh, two of my plays also. So I, I do always get a bunch of new actors, but I do have a few actors that, you know, every time they see something that I'm putting on, um, they audition for it, which, you know, I'm really grateful for. And that goes to say a lot about me and the working experience right. that we have together. Right. You also have uh, Tony, Tony uh, Trowers. He's been in a couple of your productions, right? Uh, what did she do? Yeah, she actually did. Um, she did. Um, what did we do? We did. She did the vagina monologues with me, mm -hmm. and she, she did the um, Twelve Angry Women, which was my first production that I did at Artscape. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So, um, yes, yeah, she did that. And the funny thing about it is like. I had known Tony, I met Tony about 30 some years ago when we were both young mothers uh, through my cousin, they were best friends. Okay. And when she walked into the audition, I looked at her, I said, I know you from somewhere. And she would say, yeah, you were at my bachelorette party when I got married. And I was like, oh my God. So it's kind of <laughs> like, you know, we, had, we picked up where we left off. So um, we've right. done a few projects together and, you know, I support her, you know, whenever I can get away from Artscape and I see that she's doing something, I support her and she does the same thing for me. You know, we're, we're just very good friends. Definitely. Um, now we talked earlier, I touched earlier on um, with the marketplace venue that, that you have, usually on Saturdays we have different entrepreneurs and um, vendors come and um, sell and promote their products. Oh, yeah. Yeah, talk about that for a little bit. Okay, well, we call that Small Business Sundays, and we do it like oh, two Sunday, Sundays okay. a month. Yeah, it's okay. We do it two Sundays a month. And, um, you know, the reason I wanted to do that is because when COVID hit, a lot of the vendors, basically, they, they made their money going out to places to vend. But since we couldn't go out, and, you know, we couldn't have indoor, you know, indoor things, um, once we open up a little bit, I started doing that um, as a way to help them to rebuild their businesses and also, you know, to help, you know, to help me out too. you know, one hand washes the other right. and they, you know, they pay to be at that space. And then I promote and I market and get customers in there for them um, to, you know, sell their products and stuff. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that a lot of those vendors started when I started Lady C Production back in 2009, have been with me since then. Oh, wow. So it's also about, you know, relationship building as well, you know, so whenever I have any type of events that, um, you know, could require a vendor or something like that, you know, I'll reach out to my vendors and then, um, you know, allow them to come in and do sales. And also when other people rent the space, if they say, Miss Connie, you know, we know you do the vendor thing, we need some vendors for our, um, you know, for our event, I connect the two of them, you know, so that way everybody stays working, right. you know, right. everybody stays working and it keeps the cost down, you know, too, for some of the people. Right. 
Well, let, let's, let's get into the vendors and entrepreneurs. Uh, what type of vendors uh, and entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs do you have there? Like, what, what do they sell? I mean, is it jewelry? Uh, is it food? Uh, oh my gosh! Well, we do have. I do have several caterers that I have relationships with, and they come in and they, you know, they sell food there. Um, we have jewelry people that sell jewelry, people that sell clothes. Um, we actually have a relationship with New York Life and they come out and they talk to uh, the people about life insurance and stuff and also new added products you know with entrepreneurs a lot of us are full-time so we need access to health insurance and life insurance and disability insurance and all that kind of stuff so we have people that come out with services Um, we have natural natural skincare vendors um, we have detox vendors, you know, people that will t- teach you how to detox. And then sometimes we have people that come through with, you know, programs that they start and they just want to get the word out. They're not necessarily there to sell, but to, you know, give out business cards about their services. Um, we have massage therapists. We have massage therapists that come through, um, you know, just, just anybody that has a business can come through um, Artscape and be exposed to the amount of, you know, customers and clients and even other vendors that they may be able to uh, work with. And um, it's actually about to get really, really busy now because the Cooper just opened up right across the street from me. It's a 92 apartment oh. unit. Oh, wow. So That's- I am so getting ready for this. I've been getting ready for their arrival for the last year. And, um, you know, of course that, that means um, a lot to have your customer base directly across the street. Right, definitely, definitely. You know, you know we speak- have, um, we sell art too. Oh, okay, definitely. You know, speaking of entrepreneurs, uh, you know, since, since you've been on, uh, is it 205 North Market Street, right, correct? Yes. Um, you, you have developed and established a, a well-respected relationship with uh, two other women on that block, Dr. Jay Macklin and uh, Miss Eunice LaFate, who's a folk or um, artists. Uh, talk about your relationship right. with those two women. Okay, you're muted. So we, we actually have a really good relationship. Uh, Dr. Macklin and I have more of a personal relationship. Um, okay. You know, help each other out and stuff. We go out to dinner, we travel, and you know we kind of knock ideas off of each other. Um, Eunice, I actually met her before I rented the building out um, okay, because gotcha. I've been a patron of her art for quite some time. Okay. So um, I was really happy to meet her, and and she's great too. I mean, she she comes down and she she'll promote my business. You know, she's just um, an an awesome person. You know, as a matter of fact, she's having something this Friday evening, um, and I'm also having something this Friday evening. Um, we have an art show. Okay. So I will get my art show, but then I need to take a break and run down so I can support Eunice because she's always supported me in everything that I've done since I've met her. So, um, you know, Dr. J likes to call us the Divas of Loma. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, she talks about really like, this is Yeah, so we have, it's, it's three Black women on the block that have businesses, so we get to be the divas of love. Right, right, right. Yeah, Dr. J has mentioned that on several occasions, and this is which why I asked, the, you know, the, the, the question. Um, you know, uh, being a producer and, and a director and even acting in your own production, it can be, it, it's very heavy. Um, how, how, do you, how do you able to handle being a producer, director, and actress? Because that's that. I mean, that's like three three major jobs <laughs> all in one. So, uh, but but you've been doing it for, for quite some time. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's um, not as easy as I thought it was going to be. I got to tell you. <laughs> right, right. But um, the last few productions, I have been focusing mainly on the producing and directing part, and. Um, I've actually been making sure that I have enough actors on, on, you know, on the set that I don't have to get involved. But uh, every now and then I will do a very small part because you still have to memorize that stuff. And I'm mm-hmm. finding that it's a little bit more difficult now because while I'm doing a production, I'm still running the business. 
where before I could just focus on the production, right. but the bills still need to be paid for that building while we're in production. So, you know, I'm, I'm in there and I'm producing and I'm directing and I'm trying to act and then I'm getting phone calls coming through. People want to rent the space. I'm getting texts. I got like six social media pages and none of that stuff can lack just because, you know, laps because I want to be in a production. So I will take a small part, you know, on a play, just maybe a few lines and stuff to kind of keep my, you know, my head on straight comes to the act, um, but farming um, that out, you know, the acting jobs out now and um, just focusing more on the, um, the creative stuff and the stuff in the background. Right. Um, how supportive have your family been in terms of our skate? Excuse me? I said, how supportive have, have your family been with, with, with what you all, with what you do in terms of our skate, your plays, because family mm -hmm. can be very important, you know. They, 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 they're your biggest uh, critiquers. They're your biggest supporters, and uh, you, you've got a lot going on. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say um, my my immediate family, um, my children, mm -hmm. and my ex husband actually have been my biggest supporters. Um, you know, they come to every production, they come out to some of the other shows, you know, my son will come and he will do whatever is necessary. You know, he'll come in and um, a lot of times he's my business manager on, on the uh, show. So, you know, he'll handle the money and stuff like that and extra staffing to make sure the place gets cleaned and everything like that. Right. Um, Sometimes he'll handle stuff behind the scenes, you know, so they do whatever needs to be done. My daughters have come in and they do makeup you know, costuming, you know, whatever I need. And uh, my ex-husband, he'll come sometimes and he'll do security. So, you know, uh, my immediate family supports me a lot. You know, I have a sister that comes out. Um, she's at the Small Business Sundays every other week. Right. And, uh, you know, she supports Artscape. You know, she's there almost as much as I am now, uh, my baby sister. And, um, you know, but as far as like, you know, cousins and things like that, they don't really get out as much because a lot of my family lives out of state. Right, right. So, you know, and I do have friends that I grew up with that, you know, come from North Carolina and stuff like that, you know, when I have something really big going on. But, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to, um, you know, get family to come out. I've yeah. heard from other people. And the thing is, when you start a business, you really can't depend on your family and friends to always come out. Um, I have friends that just don't like plays, you okay. know, so, so they just don't come out. And, and I know it's not because they don't love me. It's just that plays are not their thing, you know? So that's one of the important reasons for, you know, marketing yourself and making sure that you meet other people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't, like, I always use this example. I say Walmart didn't come become Walmart from just a cousin shopping there. You know, you have to market yourself and you have to get, you know, other people to follow you. And if you have a great sense of humor and a great personality and you're just an all around good person, people will follow you right. and they will support you, you know, cause we need, I, I only got about 75 people in my family. I need like 75 million people to do what I need to do. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so. Definitely. It's, it's, it's busy, it's <laughs> real busy. Yeah, you know, when, when people see plays and things that they share, they, they, they say they, they see the here and now, but they, they don't see the, the buildup and the sweat and the, not the hard work that, that you put to make sure that this, this production is, is, is right on time, you know, that it's good. <laughs> you know, but. Yes, it's, and it is a lot of work. I mean, you know, like timing is everything. And a lot of times, you know, like we live in Delaware, so Delaware is not really, really big for play productions and stuff. It's not, not like we're going to Detroit or Atlanta or anything like that. So a lot of the actors that we have here, we're starting, we're starting fresh and we're also training during our productions. So, um, you know, it is a little bit more. We live in New York. I could put an audition list up and have the place a line wrapped around the corner. But yeah. it is a little bit harder to find them when you live in a small town, okay, especially yeah. when you have well, places like Philadelphia and Baltimore, you know, where people will go there for opportunities as well. 
right, right. Have you ever thought about doing television and film? I'm actually writing a script for film right now. Oh, okay. and, um, uh, yeah, I'm writing a script for film. But one thing I found out, um, if you want to do it right, there's a lot of studying to go with it. You know, there's a lot of studying to go with it. You can't just grab a camera and start shooting stuff because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it just needs to be done right and it needs to be marketable. And yeah. if it's not done right and it's not marketable, you're, you're, you, you might sell those initial tickets to people who are excited about seeing your premiere, but it won't go any further. And it's very expensive, um, you know, to do a film. Yeah, it so is. you don't want to make that investment, that $25,000, $30,000 investment. And that's, on the che that's a cheap film. You don't want to make a $30,000 investment and then have it bomb because you didn't know the right thing. So, I mean, my suggestion on that would be for people to just, before they decide to go into film, make sure that they do the homework and educate themselves on it. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's definitely true. I mean, it's a big difference when you're doing film because you got to shoot, over, cut, shoot, cut, shoot, cut. <laughs> and it's the same, I would imagine, with, with television um, as well. Um, is there an actor or actress, well-known or local, that you would love to work with in terms of, uh, being playing a lead role with or having him, him or her in your play? Hmm. Let's, 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 let's put you on the spot. <laughs> it's been a minute since I thought about that. But I, you know, I, I did have, I had a dream team about 10 years ago. Oh, wow. I would love to, well, I would love to work with Lawrence Fishburne. Like, yeah. he was like Morpheus. Uh, I like, like, Lawrence Fern is one of my favorites. Of course, um, Harold Perrineau is one of my favorites. Um, you know, it's, it's like a group of people who, Carrie Washington, I like her. And um, there's a, one lady, and actually, I have actually met her before. Her name is Rashida Randall. And she, I met her on a cruise. And, um, you know, she does some, you know, some parts and some, she was doing, doing a play one time. Well, not a play, actually. It was a television series called Shots Fired. And I had never heard of her before. I never really paid attention to it, but I met her on a cruise. And so I would love to bring her in. And then there's another lady that I met. Um, her name is Chantel D. Christopher. And she does a lot of Tyler Perry stuff. Okay. And I've actually, I met her in person. We were actually roommates on a cruise when I went. So, you know, people that I've met and I got to know their personality a little bit like that, it's pro probably easy to, uh, you know, easy to work with them because, you know, we, we understand each other and we, we know the rules, you know. So it wouldn't necessarily, you know, be like a, a Denzel Washington or something like that. I mean, I, I'm, I've always considered myself to be like a star maker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, but I do have certain people that I would like to have in my place to help these, you know, the, the newbies, as I call them, um, to take them to higher, you know, heights. Right. Are there any playwrights, um, directors, or even well-known actors and actresses that, that you have come to admire? Um, well, actually, not so much a playwright, but um, I, I like Chandra Rhimes. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I've just recently become uh, familiar with Lena Waite. And um, I'm kind of liking some of the stuff that they're doing on television. Okay. Like they work with like the own network and whatnot. And I just really became familiar with them uh, over COVID because I watched a lot of Netflix. Okay. Got you. Got you. Okay, Connie. So before we end, uh, oh, yeah, some more people. I'm sorry. I'm going to cut you off. Okay, you good? I don't know. Oh, okay. All Is right. It? So so if someone wanted to, to, to rent the uh, theater, and then one more time, let, let them know how they can go about contacting you. And then if you want to give a plug one more time for the upcoming summer youth workshop. Okay. Um, well, if you guys are interested in um, renting the theater um, for, you know, any type of event, you can give me a call at 302-433-6622. And I'd like to add that we are now 
on renting in September because our summer is booked. So if you want to uh, rent, if you need a place for September, October, November, don't wait till September, October, November to call. Uh, you need to get on our schedule right now because um, you know we have things coming up. Um, another thing that we um, I wanted to talk about is uh, briefly again just to touch on our summer acting campus Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from three to six. It's a six week program that will teach your children all the rules of production as well as um, how to do a full out. Um, you know, a full out play. So the fee for that is 150. That's 150 for the whole summer. If your children want to do something different or you want them to have this experience, you can also give me a call at 302-433-6622 and I will, you know, work with you guys. Um, some of the things that we have coming up, we have an art show coming up on Friday called The Stars Are Closer and it is featuring five LGBTQ artists. So they're all young people, 25 years old and a, a little bit older. So uh, come out on Friday and support them. Uh, starts at 5 p.m. There's a $10 fee to get in. Um, there's also an open mic is gonna be there. We have food, you know, we have the art. It's just gonna be an amazing experience. Um, we have uh, our Small Business Sundays. The next one is on June 13th. It starts at noon and it ends at five o'clock. If you guys want to do any shopping or meet the vendors, just come on down on that day. And uh, we got something I'm going to kind of give you guys a sneak peek. We have uh, the Delaware Comics Conclave is doing a Comic-Con okay. in August at Artscape. So what you guys need to do is go to www.artscape.com and check out our uh, schedule there. Right now we have everything on the schedule that from now until the end of the year and stuff is getting added. So you can find things to do. And if you're a person that is, likes comics and stuff like that, come on down to our Comic-Con. I know they have one every year in Dover, but this may be the first one that we've had in Wilmington and it is being held at Artscape. You know, Connie, uh, with this COVID thing, uh, I guess going down a little bit, you know, the theater is starting to open back up. Uh, how excited are you? Uh, did he see some plays, see some tours, see Broadway? <laughs> How excited are you? <laughs> I am actually very excited about it. I mean, you know, I didn't really, I didn't want to stop. I figured I'll put a mask on, I'll be okay. But, you know, they shut, you know, Broadway shut down. So yeah. I'm excited about being able to go and see some plays. And also, you know, I have a lot of friends in Detroit and Atlanta that put on productions that I go to support. Uh, throughout the year, I travel down there and go check out their plays and their movie openings and that kind of thing. So I'll be glad to get down and, you know, see my friends that produce also. Um, but I am very, very, very much excited about my own production as well, uh, because, you know, we set, we set out a whole year. So I'm about three productions behind. So we, we need to get on that. <laughs> Now, now, on top of the program, you mentioned that, that you were an award-winning uh, playwright. Uh, Where did you get the award from? Your, your award? Oh, I got an award. It's a, a group called, yeah, it was the group that I, I got was called Mayan Enterprises. And um, this was for North Philly Billies. And it was for, um, it was for promoting community activism through theater. And that was my play, North Philly Billies. Um, since then, I've won. Wait a minute, let me show you. I actually have had to show you these. I love this little thing here. So this is my award wall. So oh, okay. I have won a lot of awards since 2009 for okay, uh, playwriting, best concept. Um, you know, I won a award called the Ronnie Johnson Award, and that was for uh, Artscape, as a matter of fact, um, oh, okay. providing a platform, um, you know, for performance. I've won two awards for Artscape, as a matter of fact. Uh, that is awesome. Okay, before we, we close out, um, if you want to say your hours of operations, and uh, what is the address for those who just really want to stop by and talk with you? Okay, well, Artscape is at 205 North Market Street in Wilmington, Delaware. Our hours of operation are Tuesday through Sunday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, we do have special events in the evening, so you'll have to go and check those out on our website. But um, our office hours are 11 to 4, Tuesday through Sunday. 
And why don't you give your website one more time? It's www.artscape, A-R-T-Z-S-C-A-P-E.com. All right, Connie, it was, uh, it was a pleasure, an honor. Always a pleasure. <laughs> All right, thank you for being a guest. And I can thank those for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'm um, going to stop by one day, um, and I'll see how things are. Yeah, come on down. I always got food and fruit and stuff in the refrigerator. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay. God bless. I'll see you, people. <laughs> All right. All right. Take care. You too. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.